Today's screencast is the second part of our series on phase diagrams. This screencast talks mainly about microstructures associated with the phase diagram. If you had, did not catch our first video, there's a link to it right up here. This video talks about calculations, but part two is all about the microstructures. So in this screencast, we will answer the following questions. How do I determine what microstructures look like? How does the size of area in the microstructure diagram relate to its phase fraction? When is the microstructure alternating platelets of alpha and beta versus blobs of alpha or beta? And why is the maximum strength at the eutectic composition? So if there is a particular topic that you wish to see, there are a bunch of hyperlinks right there. So let's get started. Well, why do we care about microstructures? Microstructures vary with the composition and the microstructures have a direct effect on the strength. Looking at this diagram here and reading down, we can see that the highest strength here occurs at the eutectic composition. It also happens to be the composition that produces the lowest melting point. A common application of this property is soldering. So solders come in different compositions and therefore strength. And so the solder most commonly used for microchips is the solder with the eutectic composition because it has the lowest melting point and highest strength. By the end of this video, you should be able to understand why that is. Before we can talk about the more interesting two-phase region microstructures, we must first cover what the single-phase region microstructures look like. For our first example, we are given a temperature of 325 and an overall composition of 10% tin, which would put us there. This puts us in the single-phase region, so the only phase present is liquid. The chemical composition is the same as the overall composition, which would be 10% tin, and the phase weight fraction is 1.0 because we are in a single-phase region, and that is the case for all single-phase regions. So here is what, so what single-phase liquid looks like. Notice that there isn't really a microstructure because it is just liquid. It is not a solid. Now we are given the same overall composition and a temperature that is one degree below the eutectic temperature. So that would put us right there at that x on the phase diagram. This means that our phase is present in alpha, chemical composition is 10% tin as before, and the phase weight fraction is 1.0. So here is the microstructure of single phased alpha. All it is is just polycrystalline alpha, no beta, no liquid. It is important to note that alpha is the lead-rich solid phase. So we have some grains here and here, but it's just polycrystalline solid alpha. And here's how we draw it. Let's move to a different overall composition and temperature. We can see that given these initial conditions, that would put us here. We're still in the liquid region, so the phase is present is liquid, 99% tin as given, and the phase weight fraction is 1.0. Notice that it looks exactly the same as the other one, and the difference is just the chemical composition. So we are given the same overall composition as the last liquid, 99% tin, and now we are one degree below the eutectic temperature. That puts us this x right there. This means that we're in single phase beta region, so the phase is present is beta, chemical composition is 99% tin, and the phase weight fraction is 1.0. Here is what the microstructure of single phase solid beta looks like. Remember that beta is the tin rich solid phase. It is polycrystalline, and again, because it is a solid, we see some grains have appeared there and there, and this is how we draw it. Now we're going to take a look at what happens when we have the eutectic composition, which for lead and tin is 61.9% tin. So here we are, one degree above the eutectic temperature and at the eutectic composition, which puts us here. We are still in the liquid region, so again, phase is present is L, chemical composition is the eutectic composition, and the phase weight fraction is 1.0. Notice that the liquid looks the same as the other two liquids we've drawn before. The only difference is that it's at the eutectic composition. So what happens when we cool the liquid down 2 degrees to 182 degrees Celsius, keeping the same eutectic composition? Well, we get this microstructure over here, and it, we are at this point right there. We can see that at this x, 
we are in the alpha plus beta region, so our phases present are alpha and beta. The chemical composition for alpha can be found by going from this X to the solubility limit of tin and alpha and then reading straight down. It is given to us on the graph as 18.3% tin, like that. To find the chemical composition of beta, we go from the X to the solubility limit of lead in beta and read straight down and that is given here. To find the phase weight fraction of alpha, we take the length s and divide it by the entire length r plus s. s is given by taking the 97.8 percent and subtracting the 61.9 percent and then r plus s is found by taking 97.8 percent and subtracting 18.3 percent from it, giving us this numerical value to find the phase weight fraction of beta, we do 1 minus the phase weight fraction of alpha, which gives us this value right there. So here is the microstructure for the calculation we just did. We can see that it consists of alternating platelets of eutectic alpha and beta. So where do these plates come from? Right here we have a diagram of the plates forming. So when the liquid goes to solid, the geometry of adjacent platelets provide a short path for atoms to solidify as plates of alpha. So alpha right here is rejecting tin and adjacent plates of beta reject lead. To repeat the microstructure shown here consists of alternating growing platelets of alpha and beta whose fronts eventually run into each other. It's also important to note that the phase weight fraction is approximately equal to the amount of area that the phase takes up in the diagram. We are now going to talk about hypoeutectic microstructures. First we are given a temperature at 300 degrees and 40 percent tin, so that puts us over here in the liquid region, so all of the calculations are the same, it's just phase present is liquid, chemical composition is 40% tin, and the phase weight fraction is 1.0, and it looks no different from any other liquid that we've drawn. So what happens if we take this liquid and cool it down from 300 degrees to 225 degrees Celsius, again keeping the same overall composition? That puts us right here at that x. So our phases present are alpha and liquid because we're in the two phase region. The chemical composition of alpha can be found by going from the x to the solubility limit reading down and that's 17 percent tin. The chemical composition for liquid can be found by going from the x to the solubility limit here and reading the value which is 46 percent tin and the phase weight fraction for alpha can be found by taking the length u and dividing it by the entire length t plus u which gives you 0 0.207 and then for the weight fraction of liquid we take one and subtract the phase weight fraction of alpha which gives us 0.793. So here is what the microstructure looks like. What has happened is that crystalline chunks of alpha, represented here, have solidified out of the liquid. Notice again that they are approximately the same size as the phase weight fraction. It's important to note that these chunks of alpha formed by kicking out tin into the liquid. By kicking the tin out, the liquid's percent composition of tin has increased from 40 to 46 percent tin. So what happens if we cool this down even further to one degree above the eutectic temperature, again still at the same overall composition? That would put us here at that x on the phase diagram. We can see from the solubility limits that the 
chemical composition of alpha has increased to 18.3% tin, and the chemical composition of L has increased to 61.9% tin. From the length of D over C plus D, we can see that the phase weight fraction of alpha is 0 0.502, and the phase weight fraction of liquid is 0 0.498. Now, how does this translate into the microstructure? By the increase in alpha's phase weight fraction, we can see that alpha has increased in size. We can also note that alpha has been kicking out more tin into the liquid in order to force the liquid's composition to go up to that of the eutectic composition. Notice that 61.9% tin is the eutectic composition. All that's happened is that the crystalline chunks of lead-rich alpha have gotten larger by kicking out tin into the liquid, causing the liquid composition to increase to that of the eutectic composition. So what happens if we cool it down two more degrees to 182 degrees Celsius, as again, still same overall composition, that would put us right there at that x. So our phases present are now alpha and beta. The chemical composition for alpha is 18.3% tin. The chemical composition for beta is 97.8% tin. And the phase weight fraction of alpha F over E plus F is 0.727. The phase weight fraction for beta is 0.273. So here is what the microstructure looks like. It is alternating platelets of eutectic alpha and beta with crystalline chunks of alpha. So how does this happen? Well, remember earlier you said that the liquid was at the eutectic composition and it cooled to the alpha plus beta region. We already saw what happens when liquid cools at the eutectic composition into the alpha plus beta region. It forms the eutectic composition. We saw that on the last slide. So this liquid formed the eutectic microstructure. The crystalline chunks of alpha shown here that were present one degree above the eutectic temperature are still present one degree below the eutectic temperature, creating the microstructure seen here. So remember, the liquid that is at the eutectic composition solidifies into alternating platelets of eutectic alpha and beta and the crystalline chunks of lead-rich alpha are still present. It is important to note that these chunks, these crystalline chunks of alpha that emerge above the eutectic temperature, so these guys and these guys too, are all considered pro-eutectic or primary alpha to differentiate it from the alpha that forms in the platelets. So now let's take a look at hyper-eutectic microstructures. Let's start at 300 degrees Celsius and 85% tin, putting us at this x here. As in every other liquid, we've got, you know, just liquid, just the overall composition, and the phase weight fraction is 1. So what happens if we cool the liquid from 300 degrees to 210 degrees, keeping the same overall composition? That puts us at this x right there, meaning that we have beta and liquid present. The chemical composition of beta is 98%, reading off the solubility limits, and the chemical composition for liquid is 80% tin. The phase weight fraction of beta would be found by taking the length g and dividing it by g plus h, which would give us 0 0.278, and using this formula for the phase weight fraction of liquid, that would give us 0 0.722. So what does this mean in terms of the microstructure? What has happened is that crystalline chunks of beta have formed, as shown here. They formed by kicking out lead. So what they're doing is they're taking in tin from the liquid in order to form, lowering the percent tin in the liquid, as seen by the change from 85% tin here to 80% tin here. 
So what happens if we cool down even more? Let's take the same overall composition and cool down to 184 degrees Celsius. So that would put us at that x right there. We're still in the beta plus liquid region, so our phases present are beta and liquid. Our chemical composition for beta is over here, 97.8% tin, and the chemical composition for liquid is 61.9% tin. The phase weight fraction for beta, J over J plus K, is 0 0.643, and the phase weight fraction for the liquid is 0 0.3. 357. So what does this look like in the microstructure? Notice that the phase wave fraction of beta has increased, so therefore the size of the crystalline beta chunks have also increased as seen here. Notice again that the liquid's composition has gone to the eutectic composition, similar to what we saw before over here, and the, how it got that way is that the beta rejected enough lead to drive the liquid's composition down to 61.9% tin. So what happens if we cool down to one degree below the eutectic temperature? That puts us right here, since we have the same overall composition right there at that x. We can see that we are now in the beta plus alpha region, and we can see that our composition of beta would be 97.8% tin. Our composition alpha would be 18.3% tin. Our phase weight fraction of beta would be x over x plus y, which would be 0 0.839, and the phase weight fraction of alpha would be 0 0.161. So here is what the microstructure looks like. The same basic process has happened as what we saw before. The liquid, which was at the eutectic composition, has cooled down into the eutectic microstructure, which is alternating platelets of eutectic alpha and beta, shown like over here. The crystalline chunks of beta that were there, one degree above the eutectic temperature, are still there one degree below the eutectic temperature. This is the same process that happened earlier that we saw. On the hyper-eutectic side, however, it is crystalline chunks of beta that form, and they form by kicking out lead. It's important to note that these chunks that come out above the eutectic temperature are called pro-eutectic or primary beta, which differentiates it from the beta that comes out at the eutectic temperature, which is called eutectic beta. We are now going to summarize the five microstructures that we found. All of these microstructures were found at 182 degrees Celsius. When our composition was 10% tin, we were here on the phase diagram, and what it was was polycrystalline single phase alpha. When our composition was 40% tin, we were here on the phase diagram, and our microstructure was crystalline alpha with the eutectic alternating platelets of alpha and beta. When we are here at the eutectic composition, and there on the graph, we had just alternating platelets of alpha and beta. When we had 85% tin, and we were here on the phase diagram, we had crystalline chunks of pro-eutectic beta along with alternating platelets of alpha and beta. And finally, when our composition was 99% tin, that puts us here on the phase diagram, and all we had was single phase polycrystalline beta. One of the muddiest points was why the eutectic microstructure had the highest strength. Well, the eutectic microstructures drawn here has the most barriers to dislocation motion. The platelets block dislocation motion. Motion can't go far before it hits one of the platelets. The single phase regions or the proeutectic chunk regions in this microstructure over here or just the single phase regions do not have those alternating platelets so they are weaker because they do not block dislocation motion as well as the alternating platelets giving the eutectic microstructure the highest strength. In this screencast, we have covered all of the muddiest points. We talked about how to determine what the microstructure looks like, uh, how the size of area in the microstructure relates to the phase fraction, when this microstructure is alternating platelets of alpha and beta versus blobs of alpha or beta, and why the maximum strength is at the eutectic composition. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section, and happy engineering!